Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a review on The High King by Lloyd Alexander, the final book in the Book of Three series. So I finally did it. I finally finished the Book of Three series, The Chronicles of Prithdain, and I cried during this book. Oh, I cried. I just, I sobbed and sobbed. Literally on the last, like, five pages or whatever, I could barely actually see the screen because I was crying that hard. But... Just a little FYI, if you guys haven't already seen like the thumbnail and the title, this is going to be a spoiler talk. It is the last book in the series. My philosophy is, is I keep the first book in any series spoiler free because in my mind, you're not going to click on this video if you haven't read the rest of the series. So... I go ahead and make all those spoiler talks, so this is going to be a spoiler review. So Taryn has come back from his travels. We pick up exactly where we left off in Taryn Wanderer. And to me in this book, he's like a man. Like we, it's kind of like Harry Potter where we start with a little boy and he grows up to a man and you can really see his maturity levels come through with this book and the things that he learned in the previous books come into play in this one. He really takes up almost a war council, a war hero. He, he really has, you get to see a lot of the respect that he has from the people he met. You know, he went to small little villages and they kind of follow him because they trust him because he's their friend because they they respect him he's done things to help them they they see him almost as their leader you know these towns that don't have a leader finally do and it's Taryn and they kind of rally behind him and you get to meet all the characters you have seen in past past books and I loved to see them again. I was it was kind of a fun little thing. Typically we don't go back to characters. We do go back to a few certain characters, but not to like I would say like characters you just kind of pass by. Typically they're one books and then they don't come back, but this book brought back every single character. It brought back the Prince of Mona, the the Ruffi Ruffigans, the just everyone you had seen in previous books, like the second and first book, they brought them back into this one, which I thought was really, really cool. Speaking of Prince of Mona, I cried when he died. I did not feel, though, that his death was satisfactory, I guess I'll say. I don't think that he had a very satisfying death. I think, I don't know, there wasn't a lot of depth to it. And it kind of just felt like um, he got killed just to have a death, which is fine. You know, I think that he, we don't know that character very well. We only had one book with him and when that happened he was a child we really we didn't really know a lot about him so I didn't feel like his death was number one necessary and number two well I guess it was necessary for the end of the book but I'll get in, into that I will say right now this was not my favorite book in the series it took me a really long time to finish this book because I it was like 250 pages and it took me a week I mean I wasn't motivated to finish this book. It was kind of boring. It was a lot of battles, which I get, you know, it's, it's the final battles. I just, it wasn't satisfying in places. It wasn't entertaining in places. I was frustrated with Taryn for waiting so long to tell Elonwi how he felt. And even 
when he did say like at the very end he's like oh we'll get married oh wait wait that that is if you want to get married it didn't feel again satisfactory i i felt like there could have been oh you know taryn's so mature now and he's grown so much and i think I think um, Lord Alexander could have done a really good job at having a moment between the two and really just him, Taryn, saying to Lonwy, this is how I feel about you and, you know, I, this is why I went on this thing and I felt like they could have had a really cool connection during that and that never really happened. He kind of just blurted out that they were going to get married and it was very shallow if that makes sense. And I feel like with characters who this has been building up with, I don't feel like it should have been shallow. I felt like he had enough time to make it really fleshed out, even if it was a children's book. Like I said, even though it is a children's book, Taryn had such great uh, maturity and the lessons he got taught and he held himself really well. And yeah, that's what I'll say about that. But I really liked how Elon we made like a little stitch of a pig, a Henwin, and then that became his banner, you know, the white pig, and I loved that little detail. I loved it a lot. And I don't know, I think I just it was shallow to me. This whole book was a little bit shallow to me. I know I'm gonna get hate for that. But it was to me. And I did love some moments. I loved the moment when Taryn grabbed the sword out of like the like stone wall or something. And he killed all the cauldron born. I really enjoyed that. Something about the battles I'll mention in this book is they are so quick. They are not... Granted, that's... You could say that with a lot of books. I said that about Dune. But, you know, and also this is a kid's book. It's not supposed to be about death and gore and elaborate battles. It's not Game of Thrones, so I understand that. So this might not be valid to like a 12 year old. He might, you know, love this book, but to me I felt like the battle, the battles were, oh, they got pushed back. Oh, they got pushed back. They got pushed back. And then all of a sudden they won. You know, it, it felt lifeless in some places, some places. Um, I was really sad when Cole died. That was, that was one that I cried at and he was talking about his flowers and his plants and oh man, that, that one got me. And then I was so scared that Dalbrin was gonna die. I was so scared and I was like, if he goes, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to finish. Like, but he was kind of awesome in that scene, and I really, really enjoyed that one as well. I, that was one scene I really thought was nicely fleshed out. I thought the character Dauber, and we got to see a whole different side of him. You know, we're always kind of told, you know, he's a wizard, and but he just kind of looks like an old man who does nothing. And you actually kind of get to see his power and what he does in that scene, and I really enjoyed that. A little payoff there. I, at the, I think the best part of this book for me was the ending. I, when, like, that's the thing is, even after the great big battle, like, everything was just so rushed, in my opinion. You know, oh, he sliced this off, and he, you know, everyone was safe, and it goes from, it, it doesn't go from, oh, let's count our dad, let's see, you know, whatever. It's, okay, get on the ship and let's go home. So it, it basically is like a snap and they're back at Cal Dobrin and, you know, they're celebrating. But, and then this is probably my favorite part is when Dobrin says to Taryn, they have to go. They have to go to this, basically a heaven, you know, they have to go back now that evil has been slain. They have to go. And I was super upset because I was like, oh, Taryn's going to be... Literally everyone has to go. Gwendion needs to go. Um, Fluterflam needs to go. Henwin needs to go. He has no one. Elanwy needs to go. 
No one. He has no one in his camp. He's literally being abandoned. And I was like, I was so sad. I was, I was so sad. And thankfully, he got to go with them. That was an option to go with them. And then he decided in Terran fashion to say no. He ha And I loved everything. I loved and hated this moment because I was like, no, but you're going to be abandoned. But it showed a lot of maturity here about how he, he had made promises to people in his life. He made promises to call to watch over his garden. He needed to take care, you know, uh, the Prince of Mona, his wall wasn't built yet. And he, he wanted to finish that for, for him. And um, that, was, that was such a touching, like, speech and really, really mature of Taryn to do. He's losing everything. He has the option to go. He has the option to take the easy way out. And he decides to stay and basically, I won't say be the bigger person, but to be a responsible person. I'll, I'll say that. Um, and then... I was more sad for Taryn because he was going to be abandoned and he was going to be, have no one. He was just going to be a wanderer. And then, Elanwi, I, I did like this scene too, Elanwi says goodbye to her powers and says I want to stay with Taryn. And they get married and that was super sweet. I loved that scene. And that made the departure of everyone a little bit more bearable. And then the prophecy is revealed and Taryn is the High King of Prithdane. We get to know his parentage. And honestly, at the end of the day, I kind of feel like Dobrin and Call were his family, his father figures. They raised him. And I feel like that was his family. And so everyone goes off into, you know, the magical land of never dying, aka heaven, and Taryn stays behind with the Lanwi. And I'm, I'm getting choked up just talking about this, but I loved the last sentence and how it was, you know, Taryn and his companions became legend. And did they... You know, people weren't sure that he ever walked the earth. It was just a legend. But the bards knew. And it just kind of made me think about his companions in Flam and how, what they were doing. I wonder what they were doing in that land and, you know, how often they thought of Taryn and Ilanwi. I... Also felt like it was a cool way to end it because it made you think. I mean, if you really think about it, think about, you know, like with that, with that sentence, no one knew except the bards if it was true. And to us, this is going to get a little bit out there. So just stick with me. To us, it's like, no, that happened because I was there. I, you know, we were there. And how could you not believe that that happened? It did. Like, it clearly did. But then, if you think about our universe, and you think of, like, King Arthur and the Round Table, Atlantis, you know, all these legends. And it's like, mm, was it really a thing? And then people from that time probably were like, how could you question that? Like, we were there, like, you know, so I, I thought that that was... I don't know why it got me thinking about that, but um, it did. And I thought that was a cool little way to think about, you know, things that happen in your life right now, a hundred years, you know, into the future, no one's, it's gonna kind of just be a legend. Even if you don't do anything like in the history books or whatever, if like you leave behind a diary you know, it's kind of be, going to be like a legend or something. And it just got me thinking in a really big 
scope way, if that makes sense. But I have finished the series and I am so, so happy and I will have to revisit it because I loved these characters. I'm sad that they're gone, but it's a great series and I recommend it to everyone if you haven't read it so far and with that i will go ahead and go and i hope you guys enjoyed make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one